you're going to have to bear with me here because the wording for the advanced sliders have changed with today's update on March the 23rd. Some of the terminology seems to be clearer, while some of the other terminology seems to be more convoluted. So let's try and break it down together, and if I misunderstood something and you have a better understanding, then drop a comment down below, and let's try and figure this out together. So if we go to gameplay, and we go all the way to advanced, we're going to talk about pin difficulty settings, timing pin minigame, and submission minigame. So first count lock actually affects you, the player. We used to be called hum for human. They changed that to player because some people were getting confused. So if you have first count lock enabled, when you get pinned by your opponent, the ref is automatically going to count for one. You're not going to be able to automatically kick out before. So it's going to actually slightly reduce your window of opportunity for you to be able to kick out. When it comes to the influence, this is actually the difficulty. So for recent finisher influence, I don't understand. And this is coming from someone who barely ever went to school to begin with. English is not even my first language. Why don't they just call this first finisher difficulty? So if you have it at zero, it's not difficult at all for you to kick out of because it's zero difficulty. If you crank it all the way up to 100, it's going to be virtually impossible for you to kick out of the very first finisher that you sustain. In other words, the influence that that finisher has on you. I don't know why they call it recent. Previous is the difficulty of a second finisher. And then this one here, they sort of kind of explain it a little bit better with the 3 plus. They now call it previous finisher influence 3 plus. So one finisher, two finisher, three finisher. I decided after the third finisher, I'm sorry, pal, you are done. So again, this is for the player. This is going to make it now that after three finishers, I'm probably not going to be able to kick out at all despite what some of my other settings are again recent signature influence it's the same thing but now for signature moves recent is your first so again it should be called first signature difficulty second signature difficulty and then third signature difficulty okay now let's get on with the post kickout damage recovery treat this as like a master volume so this is basically the master kick out difficulty if you have it at zero just kicking out in general is just going to be a lot easier and i'll give you a quick example let's say your body is completely purple and red and you're super beaten and you have that value at zero, your green bar is still going to be massive because as you sustain more damage in the game, that bar keeps getting smaller and smaller, right, as it moves around. So that one is going to keep it very large if this is all the way to 100. If you want to make it practically impossible to kick out of everything, then you crank it at 100, okay? So I'm just going to leave that here for now so again this is like the master kick out damage difficulty and now we're repeating everything but now it's for the ai so again first finisher difficulty second finisher difficulty third finisher difficulty the lower the number all the way to zero easy for the ai to kick out crank it up to a hundred super difficult for them to kick out of. So that's why I have the three finisher plus like you're done, pal, right? And then I added a little bit of extra here for the post kick out damage recovery, just to make it a little wee bit more difficult as a whole for them to kick out. Because again, this is your master kick out difficulty setting. 
if you will. Now we're going to head on over to the next category, which is the Timing Pin Minigame. This used to be called Normal Pin Indicator Flag Speed, Pressure 1 Pin Flag Speed, Pressure 2 Pin Flag Speed. In other words, this is the speed of that little pin that's like a grayish white that moves back and forth, not the big green bar, that tiny little itty bitty pin. And that's going to be the speed at which it moves when you're being pinned under easy, a.k.a. normal moves. The pin speed after you've taken a signature move from your opponent. After you've taken a signature followed up by a finishing move or perhaps two finishing moves that were done consecutively consecutively remember i said never really went to school i don't know what happens if you took two signature moves okay where does that fall i don't know but that's essentially normal move pin speed signature move pin speed and signature finisher finisher two plus pin speed okay just to kind of leave it at that now, just like what I explained with the easy, moderate, and difficult, right? Being normal after a signature move and then after a signature followed up by a finisher or two plus finishers. This is the same thing for this here. Easy pin kick out zone size, moderate and difficult kick out zone size. So this right here, excuse me, all these three, that's actually the size of that green bar. The, the higher the number, the bigger the bar. Makes sense? And then that doesn't affect the speed now of that green bar, but it does affect how much it can move. Obviously, if it's massive and it almost takes up the entire rectangle, there's not going to be a lot of wiggle room for the green bar to move. Even if it was going fast, it would barely have, like, anywhere to go. Okay, so that is going to be the size of the green bar for a normal pin, the size of the green bar after a signature move that you received, and then the size of the green bar after you've received signature followed up by a finisher or two plus finishers, okay? And then when it comes to, again, easy, moderate, and difficult zone speed, well, then now that's the speed at which that green bar will move. Will it be like this? Or will it go, da, 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 right? Whereas at the very top there, the pin's the little gray thing. These are the actual green bars. And then the middle, again, is just the size of it under those circumstances. I really don't know why they don't just rename these. It's really baffling. Like, I mean, I'm not really that smart, and even I could come up with a much better method of explaining what these are but eh, what do i know so now we're going to take a look at the last section which hopefully makes sense attack or cancel threshold for the player i don't really know what that is so we're going to skip it because i i don't know everything attacker button press strength from the player when you're attacking, you're applying the submission onto the AI. And you have that minigame that comes up where you've got to push buttons to move the submission bar up to make them tap out. How strong of an impact do you want those presses to be when you're holding down the button or tapping it? So if you put it at 100, you're going to tap them out much quicker. If you drop it down to zero, you're probably never going to tap them out. Attacker, player, wrong press penalty. Pretty straightforward. If you crank it up at 100, that's going to be a much higher penalty. If you put it at zero, there's essentially no penalty in you losing momentum to starting to tap them out, and then you made a mistake and it kind of reset a little bit, right? That's the penalty. This one here, again, pretty straightforward. Submissions, I find, are overpowered in Legend mode in the last couple of WWE games. 
Yeah, especially on Legend difficulty. So I cranked up my strength when defending against an AI opponent when they are applying the submission on me. I want to be 25% stronger when I'm holding down the buttons to get out because they unrealistically will make your bitch ass tap out way quicker than it should. Okay? So again, at 100, you're super strong at defending against the submission bar. You'll probably never get submitted or next to never. Put it at zero, you're going to tap out like a little punk ass bitch. Okay? And then again, defending the wrong press. When you're defending, you're the one receiving that submission. And you make a mistake. How dire is that mistake? At 100, it's terrible. I mean, you're going straight to hell. Okay? Have it on zero, there's essentially no penalty. Okay? And then rinse and repeat, but now for the AI, the artificial intelligence. So they're attacking press strength. I mean, you don't see their bar like they're them pressing, but how powerful are they at getting out of your submissions? Okay? If you want them to be weak, drop it to zero or closer to. If you want them to be super strong, well then crank it up to 100 and they're going to kick right out of your submission just like that. Again, the attacker, the AI, what's their wrong press penalty for them screwing up? Again, you're not going to see that. Actually, it's too bad you don't see the little mini game for the AI because they can make a mistake too. Apparently, they'll be taking over the world someday too, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, so again, do you want the AI to be able to suffer from a penalty? Higher the number, higher the penalty, where that submission minigame basically resets in your favor, pretty much bring it right back to the beginning of the submission minigame. And then again, the defender button press strength for the AI when they're defending against you. They're defending. How strong do you want their defense to be? I mean, I find them a little strong, but not all that terrible compared to them when they're attacking you. That shit's just crazy. So I just leave that one on the default. And again, when they're defending from you, they're the ones being submitted again. It's pretty straightforward, right? The defender button, right? Like them defending. What happens if they make a wrong move at 100? They'll instantly tap out. Maybe, right? Again, at zero, there is no penalty. So take all this with a grain of sand, salt, pepper, whatever the fuck floats your boat. I'm like 90% confident with everything that I've said, which is why I'm making the video. If I had no confidence, or like only 75% confident, I probably wouldn't have bothered making the video. This is through a lot of my own trial and error. This is through a lot of other forum posts and stuff and trying to cross-examine all the information and does that line up with what I experienced? How come all these people are saying that thing about this but that's not what I'm experiencing? They're wrong. I don't care if they're outnumbering me. Like, it, it's a long fucking process here. It's very terrible how I'm explaining it, but one thing is worse than my explanation and that is 2Ks explanation and the fact that they revamped the entire terminology for all of these and it still leaves some unanswered questions actually worse so than before right so anyways this is long enough if you like the video go ahead give it a thumbs up it does greatly help support the channel so they say with the algorithm and if you didn't like the video go ahead give it a thumbs down and I'll bend it in half, and I'll twist it, and I'll break it off in your ass, and no amount of sliders on your end at 100 is going to be able to make you tap out of that shit. Or not tap out of that. Whatever. Remember that thing I said earlier. English ain't my first language. And if you want to subscribe, did I already say that? You can do that. Obviously, that would be fantastic. But if not, trust me, I get it. Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.